oasis, a whole virtual universe. People come to the oasis for all the things they can do. But they stay because of all the things they can be. This is your baby. It is. On the big screen, how does that feel? Uh, it's the coolest feeling. Uh, you know, I had, uh, I had one movie made before Fanboys a long time ago, but that was kind of a small little indie movie, and this is my first big Hollywood movie, and it's my first novel, you know? So to have it made at this level, which is the highest level possible, the greatest director in the history of cinema making my first novel. I think last time I think he made a first novel, adapted it into film, was Jaws. So that's pretty awesome company to be in. It's very cool. So you yeah. can be that guy at the theater who's like, you know, the book was better. No, you know, that's what I love. You know, all my, uh, everything from Wizard of Oz to Lord yeah. of the Rings, like all my favorite film adaptations, they pay tribute to the original yeah. story, but they also add something new and put their own spin on it. And that's what's so crazy about Steven yeah. Spielberg adapting Ready Player One. His work is so much a part of, uh, of who I am and my, you know, uh, my abilities as a storyteller. I feel like I learned to tell stories uh, because I grew up watching his movies. And, and things from his movies are woven all through the, through the book, you know. The, um, there's Indiana Jones references and Goonies yeah, references yeah. through the whole story. So the guy who made all that happen, uh, adapting Ready Player One, is just the coolest, coolest Very thing Very cosmic. Well, you, you did shout out to him like about a dozen times in the book, so that was probably the reason. I know. Well, you, I would, you were calling his name. I don't think I would have written the book if I hadn't grown up with his, uh, with his movies. I drive a DeLorean. You know, because uh, he produced Back to the Future. When I first met him, I brought my glove box lid for my DeLorean oh, wow. and, and asked him to sign it, and he was very kind and did. And then after he signed it, I said, have you ever signed a DeLorean before? And he said, no, I haven't. I'm like, do you know who the only guy in the world with a Steven Spielberg signed DeLorean is? This guy. So oh, that's amazing. Yeah, pretty awesome. Now, going back to when you first wrote this book, Ready Player One, where did that idea first come from? Uh, you know, I think initially it was kind of inspired by... Uh, my own love of video games growing up with Atari and Nintendo, but also Roald Dahl's book, Willy Wonka. I think one day it occurred to me, what if Willy Wonka had been a video game designer instead of a candy maker? And what if he held his golden ticket contest inside his greatest video game creation, which could be a sprawling kind of virtual virtual reality, like a futuristic video game. The, as soon as I had that idea, then I knew that I had something, and that, you know, Ready Player One grew out of that. Isn't it interesting that you wrote this book years ago, and then here we are as a society, we're kind of almost like going that way now with the virtual reality, and I feel like maybe you've like foretold the future here, my friend. It's amazing. Well, it's almost like, uh, and help bring that future about, you know, I, yeah. I, uh, uh, I published Ready Player One right at the same time that the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive, the first, you know, commercially available virtual reality headsets are going on the market. They were for, for uh, on sale for the first time this past Christmas, so that's what's crazy is that, um, uh, and everybody who works at those companies, they they get handed a copy of Ready Player One when they come to work at HTC Vive or at Oculus, yeah, and so cool. because it helps them draw inspiration to actually build the Oasis, so it's incredible, and I think that is only going to be amplified once this movie comes out, you know, Steven Spielberg's movies get sold all around the world and people all around the world see them, mm -hmm. and this is like the first movie that kind of showcases the potential and the pitfalls of virtual reality, and that's going to change... Um, the speed with which you know our culture and civilization adopts virtual reality, there are going to be people who are inspired to go and, and uh, work in virtual reality and participate in it as a result of this movie. So it's really powerful. I'm just really hoping that the, the free internet part of this comes true. That would be great, right? You wouldn't have to just uh, steal it from uh, coffee shops and hotel Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jumping at Starbucks to Starbucks throughout the city every, <laughs> every day of my <laughs> to, life. To log in. You plan me. your walk to work based on the Starbucks locations. I know. that might You know, that uh, they're doing distributed internet. That might be a reality. Uh, again, like another thing that could come kind of come about uh, uh, right around the same time the movie is released. So when audiences go and see this movie in theaters, what do you think they're going to be surprised with? What do you, what do you think they're going to take away from this film? I think, well, fans of the book will be surprised because, you know, a lot of the puzzles and riddles and stuff in the story have been changed. They're all still in the spirit of what was in the book, yeah. but I'm so excited because fans of the book won't go in knowing everything that's going to happen. New things will happen, but also but they're all in the spirit of, of what yeah. occurs in the book. And also, I think people are just, minds are going to be blown by the amount of other pop culture properties, not just stuff owned by Warner Brothers, yeah. but from across the board that ended up in this movie. It's mind-blowing. I think it's unique. Um, uh, even Who Framed Roger Rabbit, like uh, maybe had like three or four companies, but there's just every wow. movie studio is almost represented uh, in this movie. That's very it's, cool. I know, it's right? like the most epic crossover movie of all time. Uh, there, right on the nose, my friend. There we go. Yeah. If, I, if I if I see that on the poster, I want I want I was, you, you get I need credit. Yeah, you, you need attribution. <laughs> like many of you, I only came here to escape, but I found something much bigger than just myself. Are you willing to fight? Help us save the Oasis.